Matthew 13, 12 through 15. The people who have some understanding will be given more. And they will have even more than they need. But those who do not have much understanding will lose even what little understanding they have. This is why I use stories to teach people. They see, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really hear or understand. So they show that what Isaiah said about them is true. You people will listen and listen, but you will not understand. You will look and you will look, but you will never see. Yes, the minds of these people are now closed. They have ears, but they don't listen. They have eyes, but they refuse to see. Their minds were not closed, that they might see through their eyes, that they might hear through their ears, that they might understand with their minds, because they're not closed. Then they might turn back to me and be healed. If your mind isn't closed, if you're looking for God, you will turn back and you will see him and he will heal you. So I just want to close your eyes for a second. I just want you to take a moment. Are you seeing yourself or are you seeing God? Just answer truthfully. Open back up your eyes. I'm just going to encourage you to go to foundgrace.com and forward slash members. There's a drop down there. And then just click on that, and then you'll have to sign in. They'll give you a password. But we're going to give you a devotional with videos and everything like that, whether you're uh, wherever you're at online here. You can go through it individually. It's the next part, the circle maker. I want everyone to have that. So make sure you do that right now. Go to Found Grace forward slash members and just fill out the information and get the passcode. Number two. What would happen if you saw God? What would happen? Job 42.5 says this. So you know Job went through some problems, some difficulties? Had a real challenging life. I have heard of you by the hearing of ears. He's closing out the chapter. He's closing out. This is after everything. I knew about you. I had information in my head about you. I was a very disciplined person. I was very righteous. I did things right. I knew I needed to honor you, God. But now, but now, my eyes see you. This is what Satan saw. This is what the test is about. Yeah, he loves you. Yeah, he does good things. But he doesn't know you. He doesn't see you. If I could just turn him with pain, if I could just, if you just let me at him. Instead of turning away from God, he turned even deeper towards God. And now he says, now I see you. Now I see you. How would your daily life change? How would your attitude change? How would your job change? How would you change if you stopped seeing you and started to see God? What he was up to. What's your prayers? You know our prayers? Okay, God, let me give you the list. Let me check off. I got this. Let's do this. Yeah, pray for that. Yeah, check that. Yeah, if I check these things, then God, you'll do them. And that's, that's all I need to worry about versus God. What puts a smile on your face? I know the situation this person's going with, but would you help me pray words for them and not come up with my own? Just pray for them. Would you give me insight for them? How would your prayers change? How about reading the Bible? It's a duty, it's a chore, it's a task. Oh my God, it's revelation. He showed me this today. Oh, I can't believe this. I read about this three days ago and here I'm dealing with it right now. How did God know? 
Seeing God would be a new level of faith. Seeing God would be a new connection with Him. You'd go higher in your right. You know when you watch somebody and you're around somebody, spouses and kids, you know things about them. You see, their, you know you know when they're checked in, when they're checked out, uh, when they're excited, when they're happy. You, you kind of know some things about it because you can tell by their mannerisms because you've been watching them. What if you've been watching God? How would that change your attitude? When uh, Terry was in the hospital with Veronica, our daughter, um, I'd just gone home and there'd been a lot of stuff going on. I was trying to catch a, a, a quick uh, nap before having to go back, and I got a call and says, you need to come back right away. It's, it's bad. When they tell you it's bad and they don't tell you what's bad, it's bad because they're worried about your driving, and so you really know you've got to be prepared. When I got there, the first thing I did is I went to the prayer chapel. I said, God, before I go and enter this, I've got I to I spend some time with you. I just need, you and I just need to be together. And as I was just kind of flipping through, and I just felt like I should look up a scripture, I went to Hebrews, and I was looking up the scripture, and it says, there are those that had this faith and had this dream. They're in this hall of fame, but they never received the fulfillment of the promise. They were a part of something going on. God was just letting me know in that moment, it's tough because it's close to that date again. Not going to see her. But you need to know it's not over. She's going to be in heaven and you're going to have eternity with her. I just knew God was in it with me. He was walking me through it. It's amazing. When you're facing a problem and you know God is there with you, that changes everything. Where do you need to see God? Where are you so busy looking at you and how overwhelming and how bad and what it's going to cost and how it hurts and I don't like this and how afraid I am? Where do you need to see God? Finally, do you want to see more? Do you want to see all that God has? What do you see? When, when we look at the election and stuff like that, uh, here's what I see. Here's what I, I kind of sense what God is saying like that. You know, if there were a big red wave, here's what would have happened. You would have gone, thank you, God. Thank you, that was great. Six months later, we forget. But you need to be the church. You need to stand. You need to continue. You need to pray. And you need to pray for abortion clinics. Oh, that the presence of God is there. Well, that's unholy. No, it's holy. It's the most holy thing. In the most unsacred place, in the gates of hell, that's where God's presence needs to be brought. That's where his presence needs to be. I want doctors to feel an overwhelming conviction of the God and his love and his passion and as of his mercy to turn their hearts of nurses, of individuals, of people coming in and boyfriends pushing, being convicted and saying, turn to me. Let me be in charge. We need to seek him then we'll see our purpose. When you see God, then you see what he wants you to do. We need to see him. Seeing God is everything. It's what brings his glory. That's why we're praying at 206 every day and you should be setting your alarms. The alarm should be going off and you should stop and just be praying so that as a unit, 
corporate way we're praying, we're launching what God wants. Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 8, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. It's always a foreshadowing of what God wants. When you read something in the Old Testament, the story is to tell you about what he wants to do with you in the New Testament. His glory came and fell in that building because God wants his glory to fall on each one of you, each and every one of us. He, he wants to dwell in you personally as his temple. Wow. And then it says, the priest could not even stand to minister. This is God time. Josiah, a young king, discovers God's words. And he says, oh, we have failed God. We failed to make him number one. Oh, we're under a curse. Send to the priest, send to them, find out what, what this means to us, what we can do. And the message comes back. And this is what it says, go to the king of Judah, who sent you to seek the Lord and tell him, this is what the Lord God of Israel says concerning the message you have just heard. You were sorry and humble, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I said against this city and its people, that this land would be cursed and would become desolate. You tore your clothing in despair and wept before me in repentance. Josiah did that not for his sin, but for the sins around him. And I have heard you. Indeed, I have heard you, says the Lord. He came and he changed events and changed that curse. Where do you need to see God? So he can come and he can change. It's not about him coming and change. But if you don't see him, that can't happen. It, it, it's, I've got to see you, God. Where do you need to see God and stop seeing yourself? Where do you see you? And you are in the way. And you need to take your hands and just let go. It's time to let go. Do you look for God? Will you start looking for God right now? throughout this week? Will you look for him? Ephesians 1, 8, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope. Hope. Have you lost hope? To which God has called you, the riches. Oh, you, you think God is limited or stopped here. You, you, you have no idea how much he has. The, the riches of his glorious inheritance. You are part of the family. You're part of the covenant. This is what you get. It's his holy people. Open the eyes of understanding. In other words, it says, open the eyes of their heart. God is saying to you, see me. See me. Hello. I hope we've added value to your life today. Uh, will you take a moment to subscribe so that you don't miss any live streams? And then the other thing I want to let you know is share this with a friend. And just remember, every Sunday, you can be with us live. Thanks for sharing this moment.